Hello everyone. So chances are you're viewing this video because you already did the makeup work for week eight, lesson one. All right, the atoms. You did the Nearpod or you had missed class and you just needed a couple more questions answered. You need someone to go over it again and that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that lesson and break down a little bit more for you. All right, so we're going to talk about ape man and atoms. Yeah, this little picture of Bigfoot. But in review, and this is what we went over in the lesson, all right, we are going to talk about atoms. That's the first place to start, right? All right, and atoms are made up of protons. All right, protons have a positive one charge. They also have a mass of one. Now, this is measured in AMU, but we will go over that later on. All right. We also learned about neutrons. All right. Neutrons have no charge. Their neutrons are neutral. Neutral, neutrons. Yeah, you catch on there. They also have a mass of one. Okay. And then lastly, we have electrons. All right, electrons have a negative one charge. So they're the opposite charge of protons, right? They have a negative charge, but electrons are super tiny, all right? They're flying around in this little electron cloud and their relative mass is so small that we just say it's zero. It's almost 2000 times less than the proton and neutron. So we just say it has a zero mass, all right? so. Protons and neutrons are almost the same size, where electrons are super small. So small that when we look for them, we can't even find them. All right? And then the last statement on our review says, An equal number of protons and electrons make an atom stable because the pos positives and negatives cancel out. All right, so we got positive protons, and they cancel out with the negative electrons. All right, when we look at the periodic table... And we uh, have already sent you a version of the periodic table. If you want to use your own, that's fine. But I'm going to be using the one sent out in class. All right. There's a couple things on that uh, periodic table square that's going to be useful. All right. First of all, this top number is the atomic number. Okay. This is kind of like the uh, helps us figure out the identity of an electron. It's like its own special number. Kind of like how you have a social security number or here at school you have a student ID number. All right, the atomic number is specific for each element. All right, then the name carbon, you know, okay, that's the that's the element name. There's always a symbol to represent the um the element. Okay, now this symbol could either be a single capital letter or a capital letter and one lowercase letter. All right, most of them come from the Latin name. And then here at the bottom is called the average atomic mass. All right, the average atomic mass is like the average of all the masses of those special elements. But we're going to learn more about isotopes and why that's an average later on next week. But we're going to go ahead and say that this is also called the mass number right now. And this is the average mass number for carbon. 12.01 is the average mass number for carbon. All right, that's gonna be key to remember. We could use this square right here to really figure it out. <clears throat> now, what we're gonna have to do is figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are, are you know, in a certain atom. All right, we're gonna to have to figure out numbers. Now, but I'm gonna teach you a process called Ape Man, all right? Ape man, if you can remember that, is going to help you figure out this, and especially when you're doing the homework, okay? You could use ape man and on the quiz, on the, on the homework, and it's going to help you find the atomic number, the proton number, the electron number, the mass number, atomic number, and neutron number again, all right? So it's going to be very helpful for you, all right? If you were to take a picture of this slide right here, of this screen, all right, then you can remember exactly what the formula is, but we're going to go into it step by step right now. All right, let's focus first on ape. All right, it's saying that the atomic number is equal to the proton number equal to electron number. 
all right? So the number of protons and electrons in a balanced atom is the exact same number as the atomic number, which was the identifier. So look at this element right here, all right? GE, germanium, okay? It has an atomic number of 32. So if you know the atomic number, the atomic number, all right? Then I also know the proton number and the electron number. They're the same number. How nice is it that you don't even have to think about it? You don't have to do some kind of like math. It's the same number. No matter which one I give you, all right, the other two are the exact same. So that's ape, part of ape man. Focus on man, all right? Man's a little bit more difficult. It's saying that the mass number minus the atomic number gives you the number of neutrons. All right, what this is really saying is if I have a total mass and I subtract the number of protons, all right, then whatever is left is the number of neutrons. All right, if, because only the protons and neutrons have mass in an atom. So I take the mass number, I subtract the atomic number, and it will give me the amount of neutrons. And neutrons is what you're usually looking for. It's not present in the little, little periodic table square. So I take the mass number minus the number of protons, which is the atomic number, and it gives me the number of neutrons. Say the mass is 12, all right? And the atomic number is four. Then that means I have eight neutrons. It's simple math like that. All right, no, nothing real difficult. You don't even need a calculator. And if you notice that four plus eight gives me 12 as my mass. So I could give you the number of protons and the number of neutrons and you could figure out the mass from that. All right, but this is enough background information. Let's actually practice this. All right, let's actually practice. I'm gonna write eight man up here at the top so we can keep track of it. Okay. Okay, now before we go any further, before we actually start the real, real practice, let's go ahead and make one thing known. All right, until we learn about isotopes, we're going to assume that the average atomic mass is the mass number, but you have to do one thing, all right? To get the mass number from looking at this right here, you need to round to the closest whole number. Okay, so my number is 72.61. I need to round this to the closest whole number. All right, well, I look at this right here, and it's 6 is greater than 5, right? So that means that 72.61, round it to the whole number, is 73. All right, so this would be my mass number. We got to round the average atomic masses to the closest whole number, and that will be my mass number. All right, just like if it was 9.9, .9, this rounds to 10, because this is greater than 5. All right, so you know rounding, and all you have to do is take the average atomic mass that you see right there, all right, that you see on that square and round that to the closest whole number. About that right here. All right, so let's look at this problem right here. This is an actual element from a periodic table, okay? And this is what you're gonna have to do on the worksheet, on the quiz. You gotta know how to find all of these things. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and look at them right now. All right, so. Let's first identify the atomic number. All right, now on the periodic table that I gave you, all right, that's on Google Classroom, it states that this number up top, and on almost all periodic tables, it's the number up top above the symbol. This is the atomic number. All right, it's the identifier for that element. So the atomic number is 12. All right. Well, the next one says the mass number. Well, we just, we just talked about it right there. It's this number at the bottom. That's the average atomic mass. But before we write down the mass number, 
before we put it in this spot, we got to round it, right? We got to round this number. So 24.3, round it to the closest whole number, is 24, right? Because this 0.3 rounds down. It's, it's less than 5, so it rounds down. So mass number is 24. Okay, well, what about the number of protons? How can we figure out the number of protons? Oh, well, that's P and ape. All right, so if I know the atomic number, I know the number of proton, protons and the number of electrons. It's the same number. So if this is 12, if A is 12, then I know that P is 12, and I know that not only is P 12, but the E has to be 12 because they're the same number. So as soon as you figure out the atomic number, the proton and electron numbers are the same number. You can just write them in. All right. And then the last one is the number of neutrons. That's the man part of ape man. All right. So we have our, we have our man, our ilm, our mass. All right. That's 24. All right. And if I just subtract the atomic number, which is 12, then I get the number of neutrons, which is 12. So that is also 12. It just worked out that way. Normally, these three probably won't be the same number, all right? but it can work out that way. And we'll look at the next example, okay? We're gonna do one more example. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and write eight man just so we could keep this in our head. All right, let's look for the atomic number. All right, well, the atomic number is right there. Okay, so that goes right the atomic number. It's 22. All right, what about the mass number? The mass number is down here at the bottom. All right, that's the average atomic mass, but now we got to round it to the nearest whole number. So we look at that 8. Eight's more than 5, right? So this is going to round up to make this 48. Okay. All right, and the next step, what's our next step? We gotta look at the number of protons and number of electrons, right? So our next step is we know that the atomic number was 22. So then we know what the P and the E are because it's all the same number, right? It's all the same number. A equals P equals E. So if I know that this is 22, then this has to be 22 and this has to be 22. All right, and then the very last thing is the number of neutrons. So we take the mass number minus the atomic number, and we get the number of neutrons. 48 minus 22 gives me 26. That's my number of neutrons. So that is ape man, all right? The number, the atomic number, the proton number, and the electron are the same. And then all I got to do is take the mass number minus the atomic number, and I get the number of neutrons. Ape man. It's going to help you out. It's going to help you work on this worksheet. And feel free to, you know, talk to Bron or I, Bron or I and ask us any questions that you need. All right? All right, good luck.